Well, but happy to be here um, and to share a little bit more about our work and the organization uh, that I uh, founded and I lead. Um, but I, before I do that, I just want to thank the Rotary Club of Worcester for their recent contribution towards the two programs that we'll be specifically focusing in on today. And thank you to uh, Dr. Mitra for why I'm here. So. And I think to give you um, a real lens into the work that we do, I think it's always best to ask the kids and the community that we serve. So I've brought a short video that I'm going to share with you. There you go. Thank you.
which has really become our, inno uh, our innovation incubator here in Worcester. Ivy Child was developed really an effort to merge health and education in a way that was culturally sensitive, um, not pathologizing, and a way that really celebrated um, individual assets and community assets at large. The program that we have at Claremont Academy is the only program of its kind worldwide that has integrated mindfulness into the school day daily. What mindfulness actually, thank you, what a mindfulness actually does is it helps kids and people navigate the seasons of life. We all deal with stress. We all deal with really difficult challenges and circumstances. And what we do is we teach kids coping skills through the platforms of meditation, yoga, music, and art. So what we did at Claremont um, is, is very, very unique in the sense that they gave us really the most difficult kids in the entire school system. And our initial pilot were, were kids who had the highest level of disciplinary sanctions, uh, the worst in academic performance. And they gave us this community of students and said, if you can help these kids, then I think we have something. So that was last year. And so since that time, the community of so students that we served at Claremont, the disciplinary sanctions alone have gone down to being non-existent. These kids are better engaged, their grades are improving, and they're using those same leadership skills they were using in all the wrong ways prior. Like Miranda who said, she was the self-known, like she'll admittedly say, I was the bully, 
I was the instigator. She's now leading the Torch Club, which is the leadership club of the Boys and Girls Club. She's now leading varsity basketball. And it's a matter of creating opportunities and a platform for these kids to just make better choices. So given the program that we're doing here at Claremont, Congressman McGovern recently invited me to DC to present to Congress the work that we're doing here in Worcester. The outcomes that we're seeing amongst kids are truly transformative. So part of our efforts is to really grow and expand the work here in Worcester. The Yoga in the Park program that you saw, which the club is also supporting, was really truly a grassroots effort to create more access for our children and their families. We were getting overwhelmed with you know, inquiries from the community. How does my child access this? How, do, how does the broader population in Worcester access this programming? So we took a community of our instructors and supporters and we created yoga in the park. This summer alone, we served over 2,000 people who came to the park, literally hundreds of people each week, coming to just meditate, practice yoga, and, and appreciate nature. We also conducted about six academic projects just by way of this summer yoga program in conjunction with UMass Medical School, WPI, and Clark University. So some of the things they would measure are things like pre and post um, heart rate, blood pressure, actually measuring by way of surveys, why were people coming there? What were they gaining out of uh, a session of yoga in the park? And what we found, that in a single session alone, individuals were reporting that they were less stressed, that they were actually feeling a sense of community with people that they would least expect to be sharing the sense of unity and community with at the park. We covered every um, cultural background in the city, every age. It started as an effort for kids for yoga in the park, as you can see, quickly turned intergenerational. Uh, and it was a phenomenal program that has then grew from Elk Park into University Park, which there's been a lot of significant youth violence in the city. And so part of our efforts and our partnership with Clark University has been to really grow that program throughout Maine South and beyond. So I'm here to invite you uh, to a few of our upcoming events. Um, we um, in, will have invited Congressman Tim Ryan, who's been really leading the conversation in mindfulness and education nationally to come to Worcester on the International Day of Happiness, which is March 20th. We'll be hosting an event at our school at Claremont Academy, which is also where our office is. So I invite you to come and join us on March 20th. I can certainly um, send some more information out after. And then we are actually hosting the first ever World Yoga Day. For many of you may have caught on the news, Prime Minister Modi of India came to the UN and actually appealed to have a World Peace Day by, by, through the celebration of yoga. So unlike many of the appeals and asks that uh, the club um, shares and invites our members to partake in, I'm going to invite you to come, not just by way of supporting, I'm not going to ask you to ring bells, or, but I'm going to ask you to actually come and join in June 21st, 2015, here in Worcester, we're hosting World Yoga Day for the entire region of New England to come in and actually practice and really be a model to our kids and help change our world, one pose, one breath, and one child at a time. Thank you. Do we have time for Q&A? Yes, we do. Um, I'm not sure how many people in this world understand that Claremont Academy, what is it? Because sure. maybe everybody does, but we, most people understand we have North, South, Doherty, Burncoat, and Worcester Tech High School. Yes. Yeah. We also have Claremont Academy. Mm -hmm. So if you know, if you could maybe speak to what Claremont Academy is. Sure. So Claremont Academy is noted both statewide and nationally, um, really being a school in what is called significant need, really by being the worst by way of disciplinary sanctions, academic performance and outcomes. Um, and that's the reason why Claremont Academy was really uh, very interesting for us as an organization to impact change. Over 95% of the population that we serve at Claremont Academy come from a low income, no income background. Um, our children have breakfast, lunch uh, at school, and dinner at the Boys and Girls Club, which is right in the neighborhood. So part of our you know, uh, efforts is really helping these kids understand they may not be able to control the circumstances that they live in, a lot of those stressors. I mean, we, we all experience stress here just by the marathon of our daily lives. 
A lot of our kids at Claremont, the odds are already against them. These are kids who are coming from a whole host of stressful circumstances and home conditions. Many of our kids are even homeless. Um, our new class this year, they had to fill out a, just a basic form, and some of the kids approached me and, and they said, I don't have a home address to put down. Um, and this is a real reality that many, many of our kids face um, beyond. And so it's, it's, it's amazing that right here in our city, um, there's, so, there's so much need. There's so much need. It's a high school? It's a middle school and high school. It shares a roof with the Woodland Elementary. So under one site, we have a K through 12. But Claremont itself is 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. Yes. I'm personally embarrassed that I wasn't aware of the school. Okay. Why is it it doesn't have the profile that it should have so that if people can provide for a need that's overwhelmed? People don't like, talk, like talking about problems. You know, it's not a school that makes the city um, look good. It's a school that has been noted um, for very, very high suspension rates. And we really get the kids who have the highest level of issues. Um, and what's happening is that there's so much happening in their lives that then to expect them to go to school and pay attention and focus when they're struggling in so many other ways. So if we look at, it, if we look at a Monday through Friday, for example, Mondays are our most difficult days because the kids, you know, they come back from the weekend. We don't know if they've even had regular meals, where they've been living, what their, what their circumstances have been. So really, Monday, we're trying to anchor them back to that sort of consistency, you know, having regular meals, and, and then being able to help them understand that regardless of the stimulus or the stimuli that come at them in their lives, they have a choice on how they can better respond to that. But the reality is, you know, it's not a school that's really spotlighted for anything. You know, it is it is one that's that's been noted really on national data, which shows us that it has significant. How did you get involved? So um, it's really uh, my life before Ivy Child. I was a you know I'm a child psychologist. I was also a professor here in the city, and so my efforts with Ivy Child was to really merge health and education. One of our board members happens to be city councilor for that uh, area in Maine South, and she had me sit down with Ricky Hall, who was the principal at Uni uh, University Park campus. Um, many of you might know University Park Campus. It's really the school, high school, that Clark University has adopted, and it's really become this model school in the city. Ricky Holm left that school to take on the leadership role, which was really a tremendous challenge on taking on Claremont Academy and helping transform those efforts. It was really a meeting. Um, we had to jump through a lot of hoops of, of being able to implement a program that was different and new. Um, at Claremont Academy such as this, so, but the kids there, just like they take English, math, science, they take a one-hour mindfulness class, uh, which is, like I said, unlike any other school in the entire world. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. I had a similar question to Carl, sure. but I just want to say you're amazing, so thank you for doing oh, the work that you're you. doing in our city. Um, I know you were pretty awesome, but I didn't really get it, so <laughs> thank you for just being you. Um, I used to teach sixth grade or science at that school, and my, have things changed. Like, I am blown away you're talking about the same school that I used to teach in, and it's been adopted from the top down. And I know Ricky Hall would love to do that as well, but um, so did you grow up in this area? And how, did you, how did you come to Worcester? Sure, sure. So um, I'm originally from New York. My family immigrated from India in the 70s, and I uh, was born in 79 from in Long Island, born and raised. Came out to Massachusetts to go to college uh, in Boston, and then I uh, graduate school in Cambridge. And um, so the real answer of how I ended up in Worcester is I came to Worcester for love. I was in love, and I followed somebody to Worcester, and that's how I ended up here. <laughs> so, <laughs> So life happens and then you end up in Worcester, but Worcester. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it's really been remarkable to me because what we have actually, what happened is, you know, being a professor, when I had this idea about merging health and education and starting these pilot programs, both as early as young as preschool and beyond, what, you know, what resources do we have? We have the resources of, of students. 
So what we have become is an academic training ground for all of the local colleges and universities. We host the complementary and integrative um, health elective at UMass Medical School. We are the number one ranked academic internship at Clark University. We've hosted a range of IQP and MQP projects at WPI. All, and that's how we do our monitoring and evaluation. And what we're finding is not just that you know we're just you know we're, we're a small organization, but what we're finding is that our students that are coming to us, and this video that you just saw was done by one of our Clarkies. He did it for an academic project over the course of a semester. And um, what we're finding is that these students are coming to us, and certainly they're there for academic credit. But what they're finding is they're also experiencing increased levels of well-being and lesser stress and more joy. Yes. Rose, um, this is a question from someone who went to school a long time ago. <laughs> and I think the yoga thing is pretty clear. For uh, one thing, it's very visual. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me, real, how would you describe, define, mindfulness in understandable language? Sure, sure. So, how I explain the ABCs, or like just a very simple um, definition of mindfulness, is it's really the art of attention, balance, and compassion. So being able to enhance our own awareness, beginning with ourselves, and then our surroundings, using our breath as an anchor. So if we actually just pay attention to our bodily sensations, what are triggers of, of negative emotion. Um, so some of the things, like you know, working in an inner city school, um, there's a huge culture of apathy that our kids have. And so they're often saying like, she's the reason why I'm angry, or he's the reason why I'm upset, or she really you know, did this. And it, there's a lot of uh, blame, and there's a lot of shift on focus, as opposed to how could I have better responded to that situation? Or maybe I'm not nourishing myself. So there's a real focus on self-care and improving our own awareness, and making sure that we're well nourished, not just by way of food, but you know, are, are we're getting enough rest, our diet as well, we have uplifting relationships. We actually call that the wonder drug. So diet, rest, uplifting relationships, and gratifying exercises, as opposed to the other extracurricular activities our kids might engage in. And actually being mindful about how, what we're putting into our bodies, what kind of choices that we're making, what kind of friends do we have, how are we spending our time each day, how much of that, of that actually involves exercise, um, how much of that is nourishing and how much of that is depleting, as well as a focus on finding benefit in life as opposed to finding fault. How yes. are you funded? So um, it's always a marathon for funding. <laughs> um, we were originally funded by uh, individual donors who came, who were close to the program, who, who originally funded this. The Inner City Mindfulness Initiative now in Worcester is, has a multi-year commitment from Lululemon Athletica, which is the Canadian athletic company. Worcester Community Foundation um, has also funded it, uh, as well as the Alden Trust has also funded um, this initiative here as well. And now, Worcester Rotary Club <laughs> is also funding this initiative. Um, and as part of the next phase of this work, not only to grow and expand this work at Claremont, what we found is that these youth who are natural leaders who want to take this one step further, part of what we're doing on World Yoga Day, it's a critical fundraising effort to provide, in, a, in an additional class during the school day, a level one yoga and mindfulness certification for our youth. So then they can actually co-lead yoga in the park they can co-lead mindfulness at the Boys and Girls Club of Worcester and other community efforts as well. So they will then be our ambassadors to spread the work within our community. Yes? Where is the school located again? In Main South, right off Main Street on Claremont Street. You're more than welcome to come visit any time. Um, like I said, our offices are actually there. So if you ever wanted to come out and meet our students, come and speak to our students, share about you, whether your life or professional experiences, we'd be more than happy to have you uh, come out and meet our, meet our kids. Yes? Has there been any thought or consideration to expand this initiative throughout the schools? Yes, and so my conversation actually, so why I went down to DC and I met with members of Congress is to really how to create this model that has happened in Worcester as a national model, mm -hmm. uh, looking at just now, the things that we that educators care about is, you know, is it increasing 
um, our, is truancy improving, our graduation rates increasing, our academic performance also improving as a result of this. What we're finding is that all of those, you know, we're moving in that positive direction where grades are improving, improving kids are actually getting uh, more attentive and positively engaging in class, and as a result, you know, MCAS scores are improving as well. Um, we have 12 schools that we service in Boston. Um, we also have are expanding this work. Part of what my conversations in DC was to bring this to about 15 schools in DC as well. Yes. Are they in the schools in Worcester? Yes. What we have done in Worcester is we provide professional development training to teachers on what is mindfulness. And a lot of it is also how they can apply mindfulness to their own lives because they are incredibly stressed and stretched themselves, you know, servicing and teaching children and sometimes they feel very, very depleted. So beginning with that self-care piece and then actually how to create a mindful space in each of the classrooms. So Ricky Hall has is, is been phenomenal in us being able to use the entire school as our innovation incubator where we've actually created a mindful space in each of the classrooms, provided ongoing professional development training to our teachers, and so we use the same model, and again, funding is always the, always a real, it's a barrier to that, and how can, how can we share this within more schools, both here in the city of Worcester and beyond? Well, the outcomes that you have shared, yes. I would think that if funding from the public school system would be, they would open up the doors. We receive, <laughs> yeah, so if you, if you know a little bit about uh, the public school system, um, it is a challenge. All of, you know, a predominant portion of our funding does, you know, comes outside of Worcester Public Schools. Uh, the school gives us less than $1,000 a year to run this program, um, and that's, that's just our reality. So the rest we have to fundraise in partnership with them, um, sharing outcomes and so forth. Maybe I'm missing something. This is going to be a national model. You're telling me the powers that be in Worcester don't want to participate in that? I think that there's an interest and they'd like to, but there's a lot of powers that need to come together in unity and in decision making that need to then reallocate but you know budget yeah. budgets. So there's a there's a lot there's a lot involved in as many okay. layers yes. to that conversation. Very yes. 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 So she's yes. good. If I may, the 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 city of Worcester school department um, would not fund anything yeah. at this point in time without an outside grant. As an example, yesterday, there was a Health Foundation grant made to Worcester Public Schools and the Worcester Education Collaborative to work on suspensions. If you read today's telegram, you will see some statistics on all of our schools. Would you believe that elementary schools suspend students? As well as preschools suspend students. Preschools and suspend kindergarten. students. Yeah. They expel, they suspend, and then they expel. Yes. Read that article, you'll find it very interesting. But Rose is not going to get funding through the Worcester Public School System, largely because, at least by the state formula, it's underfunded to begin with. So, uh, I want to pull this all together. There are 12 middle school, high schools in the city. You're in one and you're outside funded to be there with, I'm not going to call thousand dollars funding. Um, what is the response from Melinda Boone, our superintendent of schools, and the chief academic officer as to, after one year, if you've made that kind of measurable progress, what are they saying to you? Are they still saying, wait, it's too soon? No, she is hugely, hugely supportive, and she said, but that's just my support alone. You need in a time, you know, we have a school committee, we have other powers that be, um, but she is hugely supportive. Um, you know, Dr. Boone has been really given us the green light and go ahead to breathe in as much innovation into the school. That's why this certification, and this opportunity to not only for the kids to enhance their well-being, but to really market their employability as they become young youth in the city to get part-time jobs, you know, throughout the city and to really stay off the streets. Um, they've given us, you know, a lot of latitude during the school day where we're, you know, actually taking up quite a, quite a bit of class time. Thank you, Thank you so much.